Hi, so I wanted to introduce my podcast, which is called Disappearing Boston, and it is a climate journalism podcast that explores the experience of living in a coastal city in the path of, in the path of rising seas. So based on the levels to which we are currently adapting and changing our behavior right now or not doing so, climate change is something that is going to be a big part of all of our futures, whether and or not we individually change our behavior or not. And coastal cities in particular are a place that is really at risk. Something around 150 million people across the world live on land that is going to be at high risk of flooding below the high tide mark by 2050 due to anthropogenic climate change. Um, this map that I included is from the Climate Ready Boston initiative, which was started in 2016 in the city of Boston um, to address the issue of future climate impacts on our city. And it shows places that um, are likely to be impacted by high tide flooding um, and in the next um, 20 or so year, 20, 30 years. And these are places that we visit every day. This is downtown. These are places that are close to us. And there's been a lot of scientific research into this topic, um, in, including the Climate Ready Boston initiative by the city. But I really wanted to explore a more emotional and personal side of climate impacts. Um, I wanted to explore what it means to live in a coastal city that is likely to be pretty drastically changed in the future. This picture that I took here that I'm including in this presentation is of this spot that I sat at down at the Esplanade um, about two years ago when I was a sophomore when the IPCC report had just been released, the big one um, about the 1.5 degrees of warming. And I just went down there to sit and look at the river and think about the weight of everything that that implied. And I really wanted to create something that took into account both the emotional parts of climate change and the predictions and the plans about how Boston is going to deal with it in the near future. Um, and I, I kind of as a way to spark and continue the conversation about it, what it means to live in a place that's likely to change within our lifetime and has places that might disappear. So Disappearing Boston itself is a three episode podcast and each episode is about 20 minutes long. And each one centers on a different place in the city of Boston area that is projected to have some kind of major effect on it in the future from sea level rise or other effects of climate change, but mostly focusing on water in particular. Additionally, these places have unique stories in the past, in their past about how the land that they are living, they are sitting on has changed over time. And each episode contains interviews with both local residents and visitors and experts who work in these places and who are in the process of making plans about how to better protect them from climate change in the future, as well as kind of on location exploring of these places that I did and my narration about what my experiences were in these places. Um, and this project was produced partially as part of my um, advisor, Professor Ann Donahue's podcasting course um, last semester, but I continued on with it after um, that semester. But I wanted to thank her so much for her guidance and her help um, with this project, as well as to thank my classmates in that class for their feedback on my episodes. So on the three episodes that I did, they were centered on three specific locations, which I've marked on this map here. The first one was on the Belle Isle Marsh Reservation, which is the last remaining salt marsh in the city of Boston. It's this beautiful um, natural area right in the middle of East Boston. And you can see all sorts of species of native birds and migrating birds there, egrets, that type of thing. And it's a real kind of spot of nature that is right next to Logan Airport. And you can hear airplanes flying right over you when you're there. And it's really kind of jarring the, the contrast that you see there between um, human impact and um, these remnants of nature that still exist in our city. The second episode is focused on the Boston Harbor Islands area, um, particularly on Spectacle Island, which I've marked, marked here, but on the Boston Harbor in general and on the National Park there. And the third episode is about BU, where many of us are right now, um, and the history of the land that BU was sitting on in terms of what it used to be underwater, if you didn't know that, and speaking as well to professors who were involved with the Boston University Climate Action Plan about how um, BU is planning to um, prepare for climate change in the future. So I wanted to include this clip um, that uh, is from the second episode about the Harbor Islands. I started this podcast to share stories of places that might be affected by climate change in the future. 
Spectacle Island was one of the first places that came to my mind. I first took the Boston Harbor Islands ferry with my family about eight years ago when we visited the city for the first time on vacation. I returned to the Boston Harbor Islands recently, and I was really struck by the views of the Boston skyline that you can get from the hills on Spectacle Island, and how close you can get to the harbor water. I just got water in my shoes. Maybe a little bit too close. When you visit Spectacle Island, hiking its trails or swimming at the beach, you would never imagine that the entire island used to be a trash heap. The island gets its name from what it used to look like back in the 1800s. Two large hill-shaped mounds connected by a small strip of land that looked a little bit like a pair of glasses, or spectacles, as wire-rimmed eyeglasses were called back then. Back then, garbage from the city of Boston was ferried out to the island and piled up on the center between those two mounds, which eventually filled in the bridge of the spectacles. Today, the island looks a little bit more just like an oval. Spectacle Island isn't the only place that's been filled in around Boston. Time, many of the flats have been filled in. East Boston, for instance, uh, where the airport is, that was in the harbor. It had three different islands that were there, and it was filled in to build the airport. Bob Fleming is a park ranger with the Boston Harbor Islands National Park. He knows a lot about what the face of the Boston coastline used to look like, and he helped design the visitor center on Spectacle Island itself. South Boston today, all landfill. Castle Island was an actual island in the harbor at the time of the Revolution, and was manned by British troops. The back bay was actually a bay. Before that, building. geological forces were also at work. Fleming explained how it's not just sea level that has affected the shape of the harbor over time. Sea floor rise was also a factor. When you say and, sea floor, uh, do you mean sea level rise? Sea, sea level rise. Okay. Yeah, but also, when I go back to the, to, the, to, the, to the sea floor issue, when the ice retreated, the sea floor itself actually rose because the ice sheets were so heavy that they had impacted the seafloor. So when they retreated, that's how we had the rise going back about 8,000 years ago, which affected the indigenous populations that were here. Now, Today, though, the main threat to the harbor islands and to the waterfront is sea level rise due to climate change. Because the harbor islands are, well, islands, they're right in the path of danger, but so is everything else that's right along the harbor. Now, today we understand the sea level is rising primarily because of human impact. Uh, the Greenland ice sheets, for instance, the Arctic, you're seeing a lot of uh, ice melting, which is in turn rising the uh, sea levels. So moving forward, what I'm really excited to potentially do is continue this project, um, continue telling environmental stories of specific places and how they may be impacted by climate change in the future before we lose that opportunity. And I'm hoping to potentially create a new season of Disappearing Boston, probably with a different name, um, for wherever I end up working after graduation, most likely back in my hometown in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which in and of itself, um, if you know where it is, isn't a coastal city, but like anywhere on earth, it will have its own climate change related stories to tell. And I'm hoping, I'm hopeful to be able to get that done in the future. And if you want to access um, the SoundCloud page where I have all three episodes, you can scan this um, QR code right here.